gentleman. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Kelly, for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Borofsky, Mr. Massad, thank you for being here today. Uh, Mr. Massad, in your opening comments, you, you made a reference to the automobile industry, of which I am a part of. I am a, I'm a uh, uh, car dealer and a small business person. So while people talk about small business and, and their view of it from 40,000 feet, I am actually on the ground. I can tell you this, the small business loan fund is not working. And most banks cannot operate out of fear. The regulations that have been imposed on these people makes it impossible to get access to these funds. Now, why do I say that? Because I go through it every day, not only myself, but the people that I am in business with. And while I am an elected official today, in my real life, I am a small business owner. I can tell you, with somebody that has all the skin in the game every day, I would suggest to you that while we go on with these programs and we live in this wonderful world of acronyms that really make sense inside this beltway, in real America, it makes absolutely no sense to anybody, mm -hmm. and these loans simply are not available. So while we talk about this money that is available to help us survive, the reality of it is that it is not available to us. Now, what's changed? It's the rules. To me, too big to fail means that I'm too small to survive. Most of the banks that I do business with are small banks. They are absolutely frozen with fear. The regulations and the rules have put them in a situation that they cannot operate with us on a day-to-day -day basis. Quarterly, the covenants change for me. And as we talk about small business leading the way out of this economic mess we're in, I will tell you, it is the uncertainty that all of us face. And I'm not talking about big corporations. I am talking about Main Street America. I am talking about the average person, the guy that gets up every day and worries about it, not just during business hours, but seven days a week, 24 hours a day. My only question to you, sir, is, and I don't know what you can do about it, but there has to be some way that we can free up these funds to make it possible for these people to survive. The people have lost faith in this system. Uh, Congressman, that is a very good question and you raise a lot of important points. Um, let me say a couple of things. One is that uh, what we tried to do under TARP was in part restart the, uh, the credit markets that help small business, the securitization markets on which a lot of them actually depend for loans. And I think we have succeeded there. There is still a lot of work to do to help small business. I agree with you 100 percent. Small business has been uh, hurt in this crisis, small banks have been hurt in this crisis, and, and they haven't fully recovered. The, uh, the small business legislation that was passed last year, which set up not only the Small Business Lending Fund, but also another program where the States are trying to help small businesses directly, I think goes, you know, provides some help. It may not be enough. So I am happy to explore with you uh, further things uh, that should be done in that regard, uh, because I agree it is it's, uh, it's a problem that needs attention. Uh, and I think the Treasury and the Obama administration have tried to, uh, to pay attention to that. And I, and I appreciate your comments, but I would tell you this, time is of the essence, and we really do not have. We are that close to the ground right now. There is not a lot of free fall left. So I appreciate you so much for being there, and I yield back my time, Mr. Chairman.